Boston Bruins have wrapped up their preseason schedule and they did it with a win last night over at the New York Rangers. Some decisions are being made as we speak in terms of who will be on the opening night roster. And on today's podcast, I'm talking about three things we learned for sure from training camp and the preseason with the season set to begin just five days from today. Let's get into it on today's episode of Locked On Boston Bruins. Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren, and this is a daily show where Bessie and I discuss all things spoke to be. Today is Friday, October 6th, and I want to thank you so, so much for making Locked On Bruins part of your daily routine, free and available on your favorite podcast app, on YouTube. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your favorite team every single day. And on today's podcast, like I mentioned off the top, we're going to be discussing last night's preseason win over the New York Rangers the three stars, and three talking points from uh, from that game, more specifically. Before we get into that, a quick reminder, you can find the podcast at Locked NHL Bruins on social media. You can find me, my dad jokes, hockey thoughts, at Ian C. McLaren. All right, let's get into it, shall we? And the Bruins winning last night 3-1 against the New York Rangers. Game winner scored by young Matt Potra, who let's be clear has done enough to warrant a roster spot on opening night for Jim Montgomery and the Boston Bruins. And Jim Montgomery basically said as much after the game. Potra scored on a snapshot from Trent Frederick and Morgan Geeky. He was playing on the third line last night. Gave them a 2-1 lead, his third goal of the preseason, and the Bruins ended on a win. Patra, you know, there's that tweet going around, a couple tweets this morning that really show where we are at with Patra. First, Andrew Raycroft, who played with Patrice Bergeron, said, I'm not jumping to crazy comparisons, but the way Patra has worked through camp, there are similarities to Patrice 20 years ago. And along those lines, uh, who was it? Adam Pellerin from Nesson tweeted, Matt Patra is on track to become the first player in Bruins history who wasn't alive when Patrice Bergeron made his NHL debut. Bergeron, of course, came on the scene 2003-2004. Patra was born in March of 2004. Just unbelievable kind of symmetry there. Now, let's not get too carried away. Let's not put that on this kid right now. He is not expected to come in and be Patrice Bergeron right off the the bat. In fact, who can even make that claim to be the next Patrice Bergeron? Nobody until we actually see it happen. However, 19 years old, came into Bruins training camp intent on at least causing Bruins coaching staff and management to consider him for the opening night lineup to make a case for inclusion on the Bruins roster to begin the season. And he's done that with flying colors. He's come in, you know, I watched him a lot last year here in Guelph. His season last year got off to a rough start. He had a couple suspensions due to slew foot incidents. Um, The storm last season had high expectations coming in, made some trades really uh, were forced to regroup. And they lost their coach, Scott Walker, who uh, had to step back because of health issues. 
a lot of turmoil. And then once things settled in, of course, he took off and posted unreal numbers. Now, if there's one knock against him, it is his lack of uh, shooting. And looking at the Bruins um, individually, he certainly needs to up his um, shooting to get more pucks on net. And we'll talk about that as a team here uh, later on in the podcast, but that's one thing. But when he has got the puck on net, obviously it has been effective because he scored three goals in five uh, preseason games for the Boston Bruins. So he certainly warranted a spot on the roster. We'll see if it is a nine game look, or if he is with the Bruins past that nine game mark and they burn a year off his entry level contract. John Beecher, I think has done enough to warrant inclusion in the roster to be the fourth line center. AJ Greer made an impact last night. Um, He's kind of a bubble guy for me, but when it comes to some of these younger guys making impressions, it's certainly Patra Beecher and Mason Lorai as well. I think he has done enough to be on the team and we'll talk more later on about the third pairing and who's going to play there. But Lorai certainly belongs in that conversation. Just going back to Patra, when it comes to shot attempts, he only had four in the three games or sorry, in the five games that he played for the Bruins in the, um, in the preseason that's at five on five two goals on four shot attempts at five on five uh is that sustainable likely not he'll need to get more pucks on net with more regularity to keep that scoring going of course but his face-off ability his vision his passing high level IQ and uh, he should be on the team to begin the season. Let's tap the brakes and the Bergeron comparisons, but certainly Patra should be in the lineup uh, for opening night. And we'll see whether or not, you know, there's still waiver considerations. There's um, whether or not they want to burn his entry level contract. But if you want to put the best team possible out there at this moment, Patra has to be on the roster. And I stay the same for John Beecher as the fourth line center. And we'll talk more about the defense later, but Mason Lorai, I believe, should be on there as well. And we'll discuss perhaps some more troubling aspects of the preseason here coming up after the break. I've got a couple pair of bird dog shorts and a pair of bird dogs pants. And I can't tell you enough about how well they fit they're way better than regular shorts and sweatpants that are made of stiff restricting cotton and they have this cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki but stretches so you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement they also use anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long they're functional for any occasion whether it's a golf outing date night evening out sitting by the pool, working out, lounging, even during work hours if you're still working from home. Go to birddogs.com slash LockedOnNHL and enter promo code LockedOnNHL at checkout for a free Bird Dogs water bottle with your order. That's birddogs.com slash LockedOnNHL for a free water bottle at checkout. You won't want to take your Bird Dogs off. I promise you, they are so, so comfortable. Thank you once again for making Locked On Bruins part of your day, free and available on your favorite podcast app and YouTube. On Monday's episode, we'll be back with all the latest in terms of training camp cuts and the opening night roster and start to take a look at Wednesday night's season opener against the Chicago Blackhawks. 
Now, if there's one cause for concern for the Boston Bruins during the preseason is a distinct lack of shots. Even in the win last night, they were outshot by the New York Rangers. And at present, at 5-on-5, five five, they have the worst shot a shot differential in NHL preseason play. They've taken 88 shots, 5-on-5. Five five. They've allowed 141 for a shot differential of 38.4%. Not great. Goals, they're being outscored 10 to 8 at 5 on 5. If we kick that up to all strengths, let's see if there's any improvement in their shot differential. Bruins, third from the bottom at 41.98. 136 shots for 188 allowed. Still not great. Third from the bottom. And I talked about how Matt Potra individually, you know, five on five, two shot, no, three shots, two goals. That's a 66.67 shooting percentage. That's not going to continue. But as a whole, the Bruins haven't been getting the puck on net with great regularity. And that's something they're going to have to work on here as they prepare for opening night. Now, as training camp wraps up, we're going to see players cut. We're going to see the Bruins ramp up their practices with more regular lines. There's been a lot of mixing and matching. There's been a lot of um, experimentation with the lines. Of course, Potras come in. Guys were expecting to play with one another didn't quite come together that way. But at the same time, it is the preseason. It shouldn't be that hard to get shots on net. So that's something that the Bruins are really going to have to work on. Of course, they lost Patrice Bergeron. They lost David Krejci. Taylor Hall scored a beauty last night for the Chicago Blackhawks. Tyler Bertuzzi is a Toronto Maple Leaf. There's so much offense that was lost from this team based on the playoff roster. And that's going to be, have to be made up by committee. You know, James Van Riemsdyk is going to have to pop in some goals. Morgan Geeky is going to have to step up. Trent Frederick, they're going to need that depth scoring. A lot of attention will be placed on David Posternock. A lot of attention will be put on Brad Marchand, Jake DeBrusque. So some other guys are going to have to step up, get pucks on net, if the Bruins are going to be competitive this season. The defense will remain strong. The goaltending will be strong as well with the league-leading duo from last season back, Jeremy Swayman. Linus Allmark. Uh, there's questions about the third pairing. We'll discuss that here in a moment. But if there's anything that's super concerning about the Bruins in the preseason, it is certainly that. Again, even in that win last night, they were outshot uh, um, 16 10. They only had 10 5 on. Oh, sorry. That's high. No, yeah, that's shots. 16 to 10. Bruins had 10 shots, 5 on 5 last night. 22, uh, oh, only 15 altogether. They were outshot 23 15 by the Rangers. Still got the win, but um, yeah, the Bruins are going to need to get more pucks on net to be successful in the regular season. They're also going to need their defensive pairings to step up. And we're going to discuss another talking point from last night, which is who is going to play on the third pairing coming up this season. Indeed is the hiring platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. You don't need to spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills when you can do it all with Indeed. 
Find top talent fast with Indeed's suite of powerful hiring tools like Indeed Instant Match, Assessments, and Virtual Interviews. If you hate waiting, Indeed's U.S. data shows over 80% of Indeed employers find quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed match their job description the moment they sponsor a job. Indeed knows when you're growing your own business, you have to make every dollar count. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. Visit Indeed.com slash locked on to start hiring now. That's Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions do apply. There's a cost per application pricing that's not available for everyone. But if you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed.com slash locked on. All right, let's wrap up with a quick discussion about the defensive pairings and who will be representing the Boston Bruins on the blue line come opening night. If I had my way, it would not include Derek Forbort. I think he has just looked so slow out there and granted he's only played 28 minutes, 52 seconds over uh, two preseason games. However, it's apparent that the Bruins can kill penalties without him. A lot of people argue, well, they need him for the penalty kill. Last season, it was just as even more successful with him out of the lineup in February and in March than it was with him in the lineup. And if it were me, I would be placing Derek Forbort on waivers and promoting Mason Lorai to the main team. Now you can say Lorai is too young. You need some time in the pros to get acclimated in Providence. I say fooey to that. He's 22 years old. He, yeah, I said it fooey. Um, and I don't want him in the lineup come opening night. Yes, he's making $3 million. It's not super easy to bury that money. But at the same time, if you want to put the best possible product on the ice, it can't include Derek Forbort um, at this time. Anyways, I don't know if he's dealing with something, but I mean, he made this clearing attempt last night from the corner went right to a Ranger player and set up a chance that can't happen. Um, You got to be smarter than that. You got to be quicker with the puck, smarter with the puck. And for me, it's Grizzlick, McAvoy, Lindholm, Carlo, Lorai, Shattenkirk with Ian Mitchell as the seventh defenseman. Jakobs Borrell um, has not done enough. I don't think to, prove that he can carry a heavy load for the Boston Bruins. Uh, He played uh, two games in the preseason. He did record an assist, a couple shot attempts, just not a very well-rounded game. He had a Corsi percentage of 40 in those two preseason games on the ice for 20 shot attempts, four, 30 against a uh, shot differential of 33.3%, nine shots for 18 against while he was on the ice. Outscored 2 nothing while he was on the ice. This is at five on five. Um, I mean, there was a reason why he was picked in the first round when he was, but I don't think he um, has it right now, if at all. And maybe he was hindered last year by being up at the Bruins and not playing much. Maybe it would have been better to have him in the AHL playing regular big time minutes. Um, But right now he's not in my top seven uh, for the Boston Bruins. We'll probably get some clarity today as to who will be in the lineup or who will be on the opening night roster. Anyways, keep it locked to the YouTube channel for any breaking news updates there. and. All I know is Patra deserves to be there. Beecher is my fourth line center. I liked what I've seen from Jesper Bokvist. I think Danton Heinen deserves a contract. 
uh, where that leaves the likes of Patrick Brown, AJ Greer, Oscar Steen, likely assigned to Providence. And um, I made that point on Twitter yesterday, like many of you said, no big loss. You do have to account for like organizational depth. And I do think that will be a consideration with Patra, but at the end of the day, he belongs on the roster. I don't think the Guelph Storm anticipated that. They're in action tonight. I'm sure they were thinking he'd probably be back by the end of Bruins training camp, but it looks like he could be in Boston through Halloween at the very least as they give him that nine-game look and see what happens. His shooting percentage, very inflated, but um, he has done enough elsewhere to show that he has has it at the moment to to represent the Bruins on opening night against Connor Bidard of all players. Anyways, that's it for today's episode, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me this week. Please have a great weekend. Happy Thanksgiving to my Canadian friends. And we'll talk to you again here Monday on a brand new episode of Locked On Boston Bruins, your favorite team every single day.